Tugnaw, tugnaw.
balance intact and also have pull up the wishing rock. If you don't leave in the middle of the boat when I tell you to, you're going to wish you had. <laughs> We're going to be beneath there between 10 and 15 seconds going into then back out of the cave. Now I've got to get from here to the motor, so please everyone remove your hands and your feet from that metal railing. I'm going to drive on, not drive, I'm going to walk down to drive this. Hello, Thai. That just means every inch of water on the surface is 10 times as much down here in the valley. Did you see how the rock is exposed along the river? That kind of shows you our average flood line. Now, did anybody hear about Nashville flooding in 2010? A few people. All right. When Nashville flooded, this river rose 60 feet in 11 hours. Oh, my God. Now, they're about an hour south of us. So, if you want to get a visual, you see the tree by the fence? There's a wooden board hanging down. That oh, was here when Nashville flooded. Oh my goodness. Yeah, not just out of commission for about 90 days. Lucky for us, that flood has a very slim chance of happening every few hundred years. But flooding, though it is detrimental for the boat tours, it is necessary for the cave system. Our seven mile cave passageways were carved out completely by water, so without floods, the cave will look a whole lot different than it does today. Now, we do have three other blue holes on property. This one is the biggest, being on average 16 feet deep at its deepest point. The other three on property are significantly smaller. But scientifically, these blue holes are called karst windows. These are windows into our underground river system. So if you set the ground we're standing on a map, it looks like Swiss cheese beneath our feet. Those holes are called karst conduits. And there's a second river flowing to the conduits eight feet below this surface. That is how we got to be known as the Lost River. Though it's been underground for hundreds of years, that river was not discovered officially until 1985. We just kept the name because Lost River sounds more exciting than Found River, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what we got. In the 80s, our property was purchased by Western Kentucky University for the Hydrology and Geology Department. And hydrology is the study of water, geology study of rocks, for my younger audience here. As you can see, we have plenty of that around here. The 70 acres is owned by the university currently and still used as an outdoor research facility and classroom. So Dr. Crawford of the geology department came down here with some students. They performed a fluorescent dive trace of the river system, thereby discovering the Lost River eight feet below. Now, by doing the dive trace, they found out the river begins off property five miles south of us at a place called Cheney's Lake. That happens to be where Cheney's Dairy Barn is. Yeah. So want some local ice cream or food? Check out Cheney's. I recommend them. <laughs> I can't have it myself, the ice cream, but I've heard good things about it. Our river starts there. Then it goes underground, and the river does not resurface till it reaches the natural spring a half mile this way on our property. Then from the spring to the cave, we have the four blue holes and the lost river flowing below through those conduits. Eventually in the cave, those two rivers will meet again as one, and it flows through the cave for about four miles before popping up at Jennings Creek on the other side of town. And then Jennings Creek will flow to the Barren River, then the Green River, Ohio, and Mississippi, and that flows all the way down to the Gulf of Mexico. But I don't recommend swimming in the water. Uh, for one, it goes through several miles of cow pasture. So at this point, it is what I like to call pasteurized water. <laughs> wow, you're going to some bad jokes on the tour. Also, the current of the Lost River is flowing so swiftly or fast, you could fill 30 bathtubs in one minute. Oh. Think similar to an undertow found in an ocean, it's because that strong current we don't see animals in the river. 
and every once in a while we might see bass, crawdad, uh, trout, or bullfrogs. The bigger fish are non-indigenous or accidental. They've been washed in from other areas when they flood. So eventually those fish get washed into the cave. They'll get trapped in the cave. They will die, decompose, and be a food source for cave animals. We'll talk about the cave animals in detail on the boat inside. So does anyone have any questions for me about anything? Can uh, I swim there? Can I just swim in? How, how can we swim in it? Yes. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> um, we also get asked too if scuba divers have gone down there. They have not. But the university sent a little robotic camera like a GoPro to check out the conduit to measure the velocity that way. But no human that we know of has actually gone down in the water. How deep is that? About 16 feet deep and the Lost River current starts about 8 feet below the surface. Okay. Any others? Alright, so we are going to stay on the most in most this direction. So I already asked the other folks this. Is this your first time in the cave? No. Okay, is this your first time in the cave? No. Cool. <laughs> Adon Adon. Into our um, lost river cave boat tour with. So that's the river water going down to the cave. Wow, I think we should, we should, we should. Oh. Oh. 